is uh, Camille. Camille. Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to do something different here uh, as we continue with our Zalala Marathon today. And we're going to start on time. Okay. A couple of minutes late, but kind of on time. So, um, the second to last session uh, in the marathon is in the sustainable control measures. So we're going to have, uh, I think, five talks. And uh, I'm going to be, be very brief uh, introducing the speakers so we have more time to actually hear them. And uh, I will also try to keep uh, all these speakers on time. So with that, uh, our first speaker is uh, Camille Picard. And he's going to talk about the voluntary certification program to produce healthier plants for planting in the EU. Thank you very much. So, so that's your uh, laser. Okay. That's forward. That's backwards. Okay. And the time should be on the little screen and your slides on the other one. And okay. you're up there already. Okay. Thank you very much. So, hello everyone. So I will begin with uh, something very different. And uh, I will present you the work that was uh, performed within the task 9.4 of this XS Factor project about the VSPP. So you will remember these letters. VSPP is a voluntary system preventing pests. And uh, this is, uh, so this task was mainly uh, aimed at uh, improving um, the consideration of uh, a plant health risk in the production of plant for planting material. And I will present you the work that was developed uh, within this uh, this, uh, expert, this uh, group. So first of all, this uh, work was uh, performed with a lot of uh, different organizations, and this uh, organization uh, are either working uh, on the certification of plant for planting material. There are also producers that were involved, uh, researchers on a governmental and intergovernmental organization. All these uh, partners were coming from different countries, either from France, from Italy, from the Netherlands, from Spain, and also we had an international organization involved in this work. First of all, the Voluntary System Preventing Pest, the VSPP, so like the, the, the name, it's, it's, it's something voluntary, so it's not mandatory. It's uh, something that is uh, for the, uh, I don't know if you can see, but this is something for the EU, because it's mainly based on the plant passport uh, dispositive in terms of traceability. It is uh, a, a system that is uh, certifying producers and resellers. We are not um, uh, certifying and uh, transporters, but it doesn't mean that there are no um, rules for the transport of plant for planting material. So I included uh, in this certification scheme uh, the fact that uh, the, the material has to be transported in a closed condition or well packaged and also that it has not to be mixed with a, a non-VSPP plant for planting material. Um, it's uh, something in addition to the EU on a, a national regulation and uh, it was uh, also discussed the, the, um, uh, with uh, all the partners whether we should also um, make it for, for the demarcated area and all the participants of the working group, except the European Nursery Associa uh, Association, recommended that the implementation of the VSPP should be also available for Xylella fastidiosa demarcated area. It covers all plants for planting, so uh, a lot of different uh, type of material. It, uh, so it, can, it covers at the same time a fruit plant for planting, ornamental materials, among a lot of uh, other sectors. This is uh, so one of the difficulties to address. And it's uh, initially focused on, uh, on Xylella fastidiosa because it was developed within the XF Factor project. But uh, it's also, um, it has also, also uh, we have in mind that it uh, can be later extended to uh, other pests in the future. So how is composed this voluntary uh, system preventing pests? It's composed of three parts. The first part is about the quality management system requirement, and this requirement applies to all the sites of the company, independently of the host plant. Then we have a second part about uh, a general phytosanitary uh, requirement, and this, also, this requirement also applies to all sites of the company. And uh, 
And the third part of the certification scheme is about the pest specific requirement. And this pest specific requirement were developed for Xylella fastidiosa. They will be later extended to, uh, to other pests. And uh, this, uh, the, the, the participant to the certification scheme can decide whether. Uh, which are the list of host plants that will be covered by this part of the certification scheme, and also which uh, certification categ which category of plant for planting material should be covered. So two categories of plant for planting material were defined. The first one is plant for further multiplication, and the second one is N plant for planting. I will begin with uh, the quality management system requirement. And um, in this quality management system requirement, the first part is about the staff requirement. Uh, there are some uh, requirements re requirement about the organization. So the participant uh, must appoint uh, a technical manager who is responsible for, the, uh, for each uh, VSPP production site. He, he should also appoint a quality manager responsible for the quality management system in general. Um, the participants, so people working uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, um, in, this, uh, in the production should, should be well qualified, and the participant must uh, maintain a training procedure. You have also requirements in terms of traceability. Like I said before, the system to track and trace uh, the entire history of a lot is mainly based on the plant passport, uh, uh, so uh, in the, like it is defined in the European Union. So it has also to tra trace back in and forward. There are some uh, obligations that are already in the EU legislation, like obligation to notify a quarantine pest. Something new is uh, an, uh, important is the obligation to carry out an assessment of the suppliers and will use, in addition to the plant passport logo, a VSPP logo. Um, so then about the documents, there is a need to, uh, to have a system to manage and maintain all the documents, and these documents are quality manual, procedures, working instruction, information on the physical layout of the site, and all the regulatory forms. Um, also, the need to have a, um, a complaint ending, ending procedure for written and oral uh, complaints. So either this complaint comes from uh, uh, our internal complaints or external complaints, and also to define a recall procedure complying with uh, the National Plant Protection Organization regulation. Um, then there is a need to have uh, an internal self-assessment, and this assessment is performed by an independent and skilled auditor, but it can also be, for sure, external if you need to, uh, to appoint uh, somebody else. This uh, self-assessment has to be performed minimum once a year, and uh, there is a, uh, each participant has to perform an analysis of the non-conformity and also uh, to uh, define corrective action and to follow this corrective action. So follow the effectiveness of the corrective action and also to, uh, yeah, to verify it's applied and to record them. One of the basis of this, uh, of this, uh, of this uh, certification uh, standard is also to, to record everything. Then you have to review the effectiveness of the quality management system and uh, the objective and the outcomes must be specific, measurable, achievable, um, uh, relevant and time-based. The second part of the standard is about the general prevention of pests, and I think the basis of this uh, standard is to perform uh, a risk analysis within uh, the participant. So it means that you have to establish a procedure for this, uh, for this uh, risk analysis, to define the method, to define responsibilities, the frequency to uh, perform this uh, risk analysis, and to update it. Uh, when performing this risk analysis, you have to identify all the possible risks for each process, for each production site, and you have also to consider the surroundings, which is um, uh, very important for Xylella fastidiosa. You have to focus on, the, on plants, on plant products, on the growing media, on the soil, on the water, on the personnel, on the machinery, and uh, this has to be performed by a risk manager, and uh, he has to develop uh, risk mitigation measures. The second part of the general prevention of pests, which apply for all the sites of the company, so it's to apply general plant health uh, measures. That means that you have to uh, begin with a, a produ production site which is free from the relevant pests and vectors before starting the production. Uh, you have to control the host plant uh, entering uh, in the production site uh, in terms of uh, possible infection with uh, pests but also with the vectors. 
you have to limit the access to the production site to authorized persons. You have to perform regular inspection to keep records of this inspection, to keep photographic records in particular, uh, to select uh, the propagation material based on vigor, quality, trueness to type, absence of pest symptom, and also to apply different kind of good production practices. So this list is not exhaustive. You have also um, other requirements that are detailed in the VSPP standard. And then you have to apply and to establish a, a crisis management procedure. So what you do in case you find uh, an, an infested material, so uh, in terms also in, of in information and communication, internal communication with the people working, uh, um, but uh, inside your structure, but also with uh, an, an outside communication. How you do, do you investigate? So do you trace back and forward uh, the infection? How do you clean and uh, also how do you realize all this activity in, uh, in relation with the uh, National Plant Protection Organization also to establish a recall procedure. And the third part of the standard, and which is uh, a pest specific part uh, that apply only to certain plant for planting material and to certain category of plants. So apply for, it um, was developed especially for Xylella fastidiosa. So how, what kind of material can you accept in this certification scheme for to be uh, certified VSPP Xylella fastidiosa? You have to sample, either to sample and test uh, each plant for planting using molecular test, or to produce the material from seeds, uh, or to use the hot water treatment uh, for vitis, or to use material produced uh, under the VSPP certification scheme, and also to uh, perform preventive treatments against vector or visual inspection in absence of registered uh, treatment. So this has to be uh, performed as practically close to the entry of uh, the plant for planting material in the insect proof facilities. And one of the basic principles of this certification scheme is to maintain the plant for planting material in uh, all the production chain in, uh, under complete physical isolation. And uh, this uh, complete physical isolation can be uh, performed with uh, rigid material, but also with, uh, with nets. So the nets can be used to cover the whole structure, but if, if, if you, will, you are in a greenhouse and the nets can be used just uh, at the vents of the structures, uh, it, when you use nets, uh, when nets are used, uh, they should be knitted to uh, avoid any deformation. The mesh size should be uh, um, not larger than one millimeter to prevent the entry of the adult vectors. Uh, there is also the need to define a five meter buffer zone with a, with a plant's control to, uh, to avoid the entrance uh, of a vector in stars, uh, a double door, and also a vector control inside uh, the structure. You may have some possible exemption for hot water treatment, and uh, you have to do some visual examination, regular visual examination of the plants, and regular testing based on risk analysis. So this is the, the, the VSPP, but uh, within the expert working group composed of different stakeholders association, we had also time to discuss uh, uh, organization of the system and basic principle. In particular, uh, the possible bodies that could be uh, involved uh, in, uh, in, in the control of this VSPP are either inspection body in charge of the plant for planting uh, uh, certification, uh, but also national and international certification bodies like ECOCERT cert or certification bodies for global gap. Like I said, you have a self-assessment once a year, but the audits, uh, uh, additional audits have to be performed. And uh, this, uh, this is uh, at the same time an initial external audit and a regular external audits, uh, for example, every three years. Um, yes. There is a third level control that could uh, check the consistency between uh, countries and bodies involved and um, an international certification and institution board that could be in charge to revise this VSPP standard or to develop it for other pests or to define also um, uh, minimum criteria for the recognition of the regional, national or international control bodies. So 
we, when discussing the organization of the system, we, we, we had a, a long discussion about uh, the possibility to use uh, this uh, certification scheme as an implementing tool of Article 91 of the EU, EU plant health regulation. And uh, the, it's true that um, there was, so in the discussion, there was a clear benefit in giving the possibility to NP NPPOs uh, to recognize the VSPP control bodies at national level. So because all the producers or resellers that uh, would be already uh, authorized at the national level to issue the plant passport, and that would be also certified according to the VSPP certification scheme, would already be regularly audited by the by a, a control body recognized by the NPPO in that case. And this would be a very interesting first to, to, to decrease the cost of the system, but also to facilitate uh, the approval by NPPO of the best risk management plan as it is defined in the new plant test law. And uh, also that may also uh, help the, the, the National Plant Protection Organization to, uh, to, 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 to ins uh, and give the opportunity uh, to the, the, the participant to be inspected for the plant passport inspection with a reduced frequency. So here we are with the development, uh, so in general, so in conclusion first, it, may, it will improve um, transparency, transparency for the buyers, transparency, more confidence also for the NPPO. It would also improve the general quality in relation to plant health. It would clearly be a benefit for trade and uh, reduce the risk of a, pain, a pest finding and uh, facilitate uh, the approval by NPPO of, of pest risk management plan. Um, so here we are, I think uh, nothing, uh, nothing I I is set in stone and we are very interested uh, in receiving uh, more feedback, uh, feedback uh, from a stakeholders association. So maybe uh, I heard that uh, there may be uh, a pilot project uh, beginning with, uh, with some producers, but also uh, uh, feedback from NPPOs uh, about the possible organization uh, of the system. So this is uh, something developed, uh, I think, in the context of the project. Now we are uh, in the real life, so it's uh, up to the stakeholders association to, 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 to take this tool and, and, and to use it uh, in the future. So thank you very much for your attention. There is time for a couple of questions. Any questions? Thank you. Um, it's Neil Giltrap from the UK DEFRA. Um, it's a very good initiative, um, but obviously it involves a lot of costs for the grower. Um, have you any indication of likely take up or interest in particular sectors? I think the originality of, of, uh, of, this, uh, of the working group that uh, has worked on this uh, certification scheme was that it was composed of uh, growers. So we, have, we had different, uh, different organizations included. And, uh, um, so uh, I've heard that uh, some of these uh, producers were interested in developing the, uh, in first in testing the, 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 the certification scheme. So we hope it will continue with them. <coughs> Um, we know that it uh, represents a lot of cost, but uh, in terms also um, of uh, impact, uh, mm -hmm. yes, the presence of Xylella fastidiosa in a country mm -hmm. has a very huge impact on trade. And uh, that's true that even if a producer is not in the demarcated area, he may be really impacted by, by, by the first notification of, uh, of, the, of the bacteria. And uh, it seems that it could be uh, interesting mm -hmm. in the future. Um, a very quick question over there. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Davide Martinetti from INRA France. Uh, my question is, uh, we have seen today a uh, lot of people uh, talking about the possibility of identifying high risk zone and one suggestion that many did was to look at nurseries. And so my question from the modeling point of view is there is a way to have access to the location of these nurseries, their position inside the, the trade network, are there big producers, are wholesalers, are uh, final uh, uh, sellers, or something like that? 
that will be really helpful from, from the side of surveillance and prevention. Thank you. I, I will so I will answer. So I, I think because of the plant for planting material, uh, it's concerned plant for planting material. So a national plant protection organization have in some information about uh, where these nurseries are located because of the plant passport uh, dispositive and. Uh, and the, and the need for these uh, nurseries to be registered at national level. So yes, I would say there is some information at national level, uh, but uh, you have to contact the NPPO for that. Uh, or, um, um, yeah, I think. All right, well, uh, thank you again, Camille. Um, we will move on to our next um, speaker. So uh, our next uh, speaker is Donato Bosche, who's gonna talk about um, work with a very large number of olive cultivars. Thank you, Rodrigo. Good afternoon to everybody. And so the, the title is, is, ve is a, a very large uh, number of, of uh, olive cultivars, but in fact, there is a, a quite large number of olive cultivars that uh, is under evaluation. <laughs> but I will update uh, uh, today uh, on the results of uh, uh, a not very large number, uh, uh, on uh, circa 30 uh, cultivar, while waiting uh, the time requested to, to have a more uh, reliable data for the other cultivars that are, are uh, under uh, testing. Uh, just just to, to remember, this is uh, one aerial view of uh, where you can see the difference between one uh, uh, Leccino uh, orchard compared with uh, olives of uh, Ogliarola and that uh, Leccino as you know has been already previously reported to have a, a character of resistance to this uh, to this bacterium pauca ST53 that we are dealing with in, uh, in uh, Apulia. Uh, I will briefly report something about uh, um, three, three, three line of research that were carrying out on uh, this. Uh, there are also others, but the others that are reported, uh, for the others, uh, there are a couple of posters in, uh, in, uh, in the poster section uh, regarding one uh, in particular, there is now a large project that is, uh, uh, that is named Resixos that has been funded by the Apulia region, uh, in, in which among uh, the testing of uh, few hundred of the different uh, cultivars. There is also an, in, an uh, interesting work done in order to select, uh, uh, first by visual selection, and then by laboratory analysis, and then by pathogenesis test, uh, wild seedlings that, uh, that are growing spontaneously in the infected, heavily infected area, the, uh, uh, the looking as uh, symptomless during this time compared with uh, the majority of the seedlings that are showing uh, uh, severe symptoms. So the, I will uh, first of all, I will report some results about some field survey uh, in the heavily infected area to evaluate uh, cultivar in commercial plots and search for asymptomatic trees. Uh, th th this is why, because uh, we found this uh, uh, practice very useful. Uh, it, it, this was the practice that already allowed us to, to get the preliminary uh, results uh, by the identification of Lecino and FS17 in a relatively short time, uh, because uh, uh, plants that were by chance already present, cultivated in, in area that uh, is a uh, was already under pressure, has been uh, under high pressure of inoculum for several years, uh, can give us ready the, the result of the testing uh, uh, for uh, the sensitivity to this uh, strain of Xella fastidiosa. So the data have been collected uh, that, that I'm reporting briefly on uh, Coratina, that is uh, one very important, one of the major cultivar, not in the southern part of uh, the region where there is uh, the epidemic, but in Apulia in general, the central north northern part of Apulia, but also Frantoio, that is a ve another very important uh, cultivar, at least at the national uh, level, and, uh, and also Calamato, one Greek cultivar, and uh, some additional uh, data uh, on FS17 and Leccino, and uh, as, as a sensitive control, 
Cellina and uh, Ogliarola Salentina. And uh, this has been uh, limited to the cultivar already grown in the area, as I already said uh, before. And uh, the, other, the other thing that, would, that will uh, inform you shortly is the evaluation on uh, a, a number of cultivars in experimental plots that has been established uh, for to this purpose, uh, some in 2015, some in 2016, and I will stop here for the report because another large uh, group of cultivars has been uh, planted into, into 2017 within the, the XF Actors project, but according to the experience that we made uh, during this year, the time is still limited to, to, to give you some uh, even preliminary uh, indication. And, um, and finally, uh, some, uh, some comments, some consideration uh, concerning the uh, evaluation of a high number of cultivars that is, uh, uh, under, uh, that is uh, in progress now in, uh, in greenhouse, through greenhouse uh, uh, testing. Uh, so, uh, briefly, I will start already for the field survey with, with the, the results, because uh, uh, we, 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 we found very sensitive because they were showing very severe symptoms, uh, both uh, uh, Calamata and Coratina, unfortunately, as well as Ogliarola and Cellina di Nardò, that for this one was the confirmation because are the two most uh, um, uh, present spread the cultivars in the area that we already knew were to be very sensitive. In case of the Frantoio, we, we, we observe a, a, an intermediate situation, a kind of limbo. So there is a, it, it is not, seems to be not so sensitive as the previous one, but uh, not enough tolerant or resistant to the, to the, to the bacterium because uh, the, the symptoms that uh, are shown are uh, more attenuated if, if compared with the previous one, but are also relevant. Uh, so on uh, middle term, they became, uh, uh, they, they limit a lot the, the, the production, the, the possibility to manage a, an orchard of, of this cultivar. Uh, while uh, we confirmed very mild symptoms in Lecino and in FS17 as, uh, as well. So the, here you can have an idea, not only uh, uh, more, uh, this, this, uh, this uh, visual observation has been also confirmed by the uh, quantitative analysis of the bacterium that uh, has been done in this uh, trees. The, the, um, for each of these cultivars, this analysis has been, the laboratory analysis, uh, the, the has been done or a number of minimum number of, of 12 trees in a bigger lot where we made a larger visual uh, inspection. And uh, yes, so you can see as uh, this is a confirmation that uh, in, uh, you, you can see on each tree, there are three different kind of quantitative analysis. On leaf, on leaf, that one, that uh, kind of oval, uh, blue one that you can see on a very tender, um, well, very young stem, partially, uh, partially wood, but not completely mature, and on uh, and on um, and on uh, more mature stem, so cuttings, uh, woody cuttings of the olive. So, and in all cases, the test has been done by real-time PCR, so you can read the CQ of the as the results. Uh, you can see that the numbers are quite low uh, as indication of, ver of a very high con population of the bacterium inside of, of, those, uh, of those plants. That, uh, so a, a concentration of population that has been calculated to range approximately between uh, six, uh, 10 to 6 uh, to 10 to 7 uh, C CFU per milliliter. That I, I, I believe you can agree that is a very high population of the bacterium. Those are some uh, example of uh, how this uh, um, how this uh, appear. So you can see on the left uh, that uh, the one orchard, one row of uh, olive coratina that uh, almost completely collapsed. 
uh, while uh, on the right uh, there is a Kalamata, Kalamata with, uh, with severe symptoms, less severe that, than uh, Coratin in this case, but also younger trees. And uh, in general, in general, we observed during this year in Apulia that the, um, the, 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 the development of the symptoms uh, is uh, faster, goes faster in old, very old adult or very old trees than in younger trees. So it is normal to have a, a slower develop, development of the disease in the younger trees. And uh, uh, so you can... Well, uh, as I told you, there is a, the situation, it's a little bit better in case of Frantoio, uh, where the, we can, uh, we can uh, also calculate a population of bacterium uh, ranging between 10 uh, to 3 to 10 to 4 CFU per milliliter. And uh, this is one case, uh, one field of FS17 with uh, uh, showing very, very mild uh, or rare symptoms and uh, most samples are uh, testing negative, and uh, while in the positive, the, the populations with bacterium uh, um, um, uh, reasonably, um, relatively low, with uh, approximately of uh, 10 uh, to 3 CFU per milliliter. Uh, Oliarola, so this is one example of uh, Oliarola on the left, com on the left compared to one uh, trees of uh, FS17 on the right. So coming to the, to the field, to the plots that uh, we, we have planted, we focused on uh, the one first trial planted in uh, 2015. This is, uh, uh, was funded by EFS at that time. This is the evolution of the percentage of, of uh, trees testing positive. But you can see that also Lecino in the, in the last year, this year, reached uh, 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 over 50% of positive trees. That doesn't mean that uh, uh, to be highly sensitive because the, po po the positive in, uh, in, uh, to that positive usually correspond a, a low population of the bacterium, as I told you. So we should consider both parameters. Uh, but uh, uh, here you can see that in this plot having only four years of age. I told you the age is important for the development of symptoms. Uh, there are most of the cultivars, no one uh, performed better than, uh, than Lecino. And uh, in uh, those, uh, uh, the numbers are the score of, of, the, of, the, of the severity of the symptoms. But uh, this is, uh, those are some representative example you can see that we can, uh, at least in our experience, we can conclude that Arbequina is, uh, is quite uh, uh, s sensitive, as well as Arbosana, as well as uh, Coroneiki. You can see Coroneiki already severity 2.6, that is already a, a severe uh, impact. This, uh, this uh, lots were this has been made on lots of, of uh, 24 uh, plants per each uh, cultivar. In, the, in the, the second plot that was uh, planted one year later, so there is one year less of observation in the Ponte project, you, we can uh, see, I, can, I will go straight to, the, to this year, the results of this year. This year, we, we, we observed, compared with the first three years, a, a jump, a, a, a dramatic increase of the uh, plants testing positive to the analysis. You can, uh, you can see as the, the Lecino is still keeping a, a relatively low percentage of positive to the, to the analysis, and only, only one, two, three, four, five cultivars uh, remain with a percentage of, of positive plants below 50%. Uh, but uh, what is most interesting is that uh, so the, the, the bar on the left, the, the darker bar, represents the percentage of the plants showing symptoms among the plants positive to the analysis. And another interesting point is that we observe uh, 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 symptoms only in 
uh, plants that tested positive to Xylella fastidiosa. All the, the, the remaining that were as, are still negative to Xylella are still symptomless. And uh, you can see R as there are, so the green, the green one are, are those show, uh, showing the lower, the lower are up, so far reasonable, good, acceptable level of, uh, of uh, severity because it's below, uh, below, below one. And there are also, in addition to Lecino, that is still symptomless. There is also another one that is, it, it remains symptomless. I will show you some, so the names are, are here in this table. So to, to, Toscanina and uh, Termite di Bitetto, Maiatica, Dolce di Cassano, uh, Oliastra and, no, and Noncellara Etnea, so far seems to, to be relatively uh, promising. In particular, this, this Maiatica that uh, uh, is still symptomless as Lecino. But at the same time, we, we want to be uh, still keep precaution on this because since this year we observe a jump of the, of the percentage of, of infected, we would like to wait at least another additional year before to, to make some uh, conclusion. This is just some example, the Simone, very uh, sensitive, Termite di Bitetto, that so far is uh, almost symptomless. Toscanina so far uh, almost symptomless as well. No, this is a, a mistake. This Maiatica uh, is uh, symptomless, uh, totally symptomless. And uh, so uh, one more minute to comment something about the, the, the greenhouse test. There are, we found in this, uh, in this year, uh, unfortunately, that we, we met with some, uh, with some limitations. So for some, uh, uh, for some uh, selection, only few plants get systemically, systemically infected uh, and uh, making it difficult to make assessment. And the conditions in greenhouse are not always uh, suitable for uh, promoting uh, uh, appearance of symptoms, apparently. So, of course, when one plant shows symptoms, one cultivar shows symptoms, it is, uh, it is sensitive. But uh, when it doesn't, even if it gets infected, we, we, we are concluding that we need, it is necessary to validate the data in the field. So that's why we are not in condition still to, to, to make conclusion on this, even if currently we have more than 100 cultivar under testing. Uh, well, this is just some cases of a cultivar showing symptoms in, in greenhouse, but also some that are systematically infected as mo moraiolo on the left that apparently could be uh, tolerant. We have to, to check better in the field. But while uh, Arbequina, positive in greenhouse, but symptomless in the field, we saw before that the situation is not uh, this. So just reading the conclusion, field survey confirmed the previous observation uh, and provided new evidences of susceptibilities. None of the 27 cultivars exposed in the field condition to three or to four years of natural inoculum pressure were found to be immune. Some cultivars show promising characters of resistance or, or tolerance. However, none of them perform better than the benchmark of the test that uh, in our case was the, the Lecino. And uh, that's it, this is the theme. Thank you. All right, uh, thank you, Donato, but no questions for you. <laughs> uh, all right, so um, trying to uh, stay on time here. Our next uh, speaker is uh, Enza Don Giovanni, and she will talk about strategies to uh, control Zylala um, uh, spittlebug populations as well as Zylala transmission. Okay, uh, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, my topic is uh, the evolution of uh, different strategy for reduction of uh, vector population and the uh, transmission of uh, Xella fastidiosa in uh, olive uh, grove. Uh, uh, Acutally, uh, in, 
Italy and in uh, Europe, uh, the only ancestor vector of Icteria fastidiosa are uh, Philenus spumarius, uh, Neophilenus campesis, and uh, Philenus italiosinus. Uh, but uh, the uh, predominant, predominant vector remains uh, Philenus spumarius because uh, the density population in uh, olive orchard is uh, very high in comparison to other spitterback uh, because uh, the efficiency of the transmission of uh, this spitterback uh, uh, bug is uh, very high. Uh, the control of uh, uh, the vector is the electron method uh, to reduce the density population in, uh, and uh, avoid uh, the spread of uh, uh, vector born uh, pathogen and so uh, the disease. So our goal is reduction of the population of spitter bug, of uh, juvenile and also of uh, adults, and uh, redu reduction uh, the number of visits, uh, the possibility that uh, uh, adults of Finance Fumars come on uh, infected uh, plant, acquire the bacteria and uh, so transmit it uh, to um, infected uh, plant. Uh, during our, our activity, we want to evaluate uh, different uh, approach uh, for verify the effect uh, against uh, juvenile. Uh, in uh, this field, uh, we have uh, uh, compared eight treatment, industry bed and uh, ground vegetation, uh, an application of herbicide at the end of uh, the winter, when generally the farmer applied uh, the herbicide to control of the weeds, uh, weeds. Uh, the application of uh, the mineral oil and uh, of uh, February uh, for a verified the possibility to reduction the etching of the eggs and uh, then soil tillage, uh, pyro weeding, mulching, uh, herbicide and uh, shall, uh, shallow plugging. All of these treatment applied when uh, the instars was at uh, four instars this, uh, that are the best moment uh, to control uh, the juvenile of uh, this uh, species. This is uh, the resources that we have obtained, obtained. as expected, uh, the application of uh, soil tillage showed the best resources, all uh, the juvenile in uh, the soil field trial uh, diet. Uh, good uh, results were also obtained with uh, uh, using uh, a systemic uh, herbicide during uh, the uh, late of the winter and uh, by pyro weeding. And uh, good uh, followed by uh, mulching and shallow plugging, plugging while uh, mineral oil and uh, the application of herbicide, contact herbicide during the uh, four instar uh, were not effective in the control of juvenile of uh, Philenus uh, spumarius. This is uh, the results regarding Neophilenus campestris, uh, um, similar that well, uh, we have given against uh, Philenus uh, spumarius. In order to obtain a uh, um, remarked uh, result, we have also uh, survived seven, uh, seven uh, orchards, and in each orchard we have uh, compared mulching uh, versus soil uh, tillage. It's uh, um, evident in this slide, the application of soil tillage uh, showed uh, uh, always uh, almost always the best result with 8% uh, of uh, um, Abbott index. Uh, in, uh, only in uh, two cases uh, we have uh, obtained uh, mm, uh, no good result because uh, the uh, soil tissue is not performed in a, a good um, um, in good uh, 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 mode, and so uh, some of uh, the weeds uh, remain in the uh, soil, and so uh, the uh, juvenile uh, can uh, become uh, adults. While um, Uh, while uh, mulching uh, showed uh, inconstant uh, results because only in one case uh, all, uh, two, all uh, 
uh, the juvenile in uh, the plot, uh, tested the plot diet, uh, while in other case uh, the Abbott index ranged from uh, 10% to 8%. Uh, also in this case, depending from the uh, mode of uh, the application, application of th this uh, method. Then uh, we want to evaluate the possibility of using uh, sowing uh, poache, such as lolium and uh, ordeum, uh, in comparison to uh, natural grow vegetation, uh, tilling soil in, uh, only in the, during uh, uh, the winter or uh, uh, tilling soil to uh, time during the winter and uh, during uh, the uh, spring. Uh, as I said before, uh, the soil tilling uh, uh, um, showed the best result in uh, the, uh, containing the juvenile of uh, Philenus fumais, both Philenus fumais and Philenus uh, campestris, uh, when it was up two times in the winter and uh, during uh, the spring. While when the uh, thinning was uh, happened only during the sp uh, spring, uh, uh, no uh, effect wa uh, was observed against Philenus fumars, uh, good result uh, while well obtained against Neophilenus campestis. Uh, regarding the sowing of uh, Fuace, uh, the best result were obtained using sowing lolium uh, as uh, respect to uh, sowing or deum against Philenus fumarius, while against Neophilenus campestris, uh, more efficacy are um, the sowing of, of uh, the ordeum, but only in one year during 2017, because in, during the second year of the activity, uh, no effect with, uh, were observed against Neophilenus campestris with sowing uh, the two kinds of poache. Probably because uh, this kind of activity were carried out in the same plot, in the same field uh, trial, and so probably uh, the, uh, the family of uh, Neoplemis campesti um, lay uh, more eggs on uh, vegetal residues respect to the uh, um, uh, previous years. This is the result of uh, 2018. Um, in uh, this case, uh, um, always uh, soil tillage, uh, tillage showed high uh, efficacy uh, in uh, the control of uh, juvenile, while uh, tilling soil only in, uh, during the winter and the sowing poache uh, not, uh, are good effective in uh, the control of uh, Philenos fumars, the best results uh, were obtained against uh, of finance campuses, but probably because in uh, this case uh, the uh, plugging in the winter were carried out in the late winter and uh, the effect uh, were uh, due uh, to the uh, tilling that uh, probably uh, reducing the etching of uh, the eggs. Uh, during this year, we have carried uh, out a different uh, field uh, trial to evaluate uh, different chemical or uh, um, inert compound or, or organic, uh, natural substance for uh, verify their uh, effect against the juvenile of uh, Philenus uh, spumalis. This is uh, one of uh, the field trial that we have carried out. The other uh, trial uh, go the same, uh, same results. As I said in this slide, uh, the best effective effectiveness were obtained when uh, we used uh, the uh, chemical substance, uh, pyretroid and neonicotinoid. While uh, also um, good results were obtained when uh, was applied an uh, inert compound uh, as zeolite and followed but uh, citrus extract oil and uh, by uh, kaolin. Uh, the control of the juvenile is the first step to uh, reduce the density population uh, of juvenile um, of uh, the split bug. Uh, but 
um, um, adult uh, can come uh, from uh, other orchard. So it is mo most important to evaluate the presence of the adults in uh, the orchard. Uh, so uh, um, we have uh, tested the possibility, uh, possibility to use um, um, yellow sticky trap uh, in comparison with the uh, sweep uh, net uh, for verify that uh, is able uh, to uh, uh, determine the uh, presence of adult of uh, Philenus uh, sfumarus. We have carried out eight field, field, uh, field trial, uh, three uh, field trial with low density, po uh, density population, three field trial with medium density population, three field with high density population. In each field trial, we have positioned 21 trap randomized in the olive orchard at, at 150 cm above the ground vegetation. And each trap were replaced every uh, two uh, weeks. Uh, we, have, uh, we have observed that uh, adult on uh, traps were captured uh, later uh, than uh, sweep net, generally one week to one month after uh, sweep uh, net, uh, net. But uh, in uh, all uh, different cases, consistent results were obtained using uh, both approaches. The uh, difference are that uh, in the case of uh, low density uh, population, uh, both uh, traps and uh, sweep net uh, capture, um, uh, low uh, capture were obta obtained. In the uh, case of medium density uh, population and high density uh, population, um, trap are more effective in uh, the uh, capture of uh, the adults of, uh, of Finenus uh, spumario. Gen generally, we observed uh, two uh, uh, specimens for uh, each uh, trap with uh, two peak uh, in both uh, cases, while uh, the number of specimens that uh, were captured with a skip net was lower than 0.5 in a um, field with uh, medium density and uh, lower than one um, individual per sweep net in the case of high density uh, population. Uh, other activity uh, regarding the evaluation of uh, different insecticides to control adult of Philenus fumans. This uh, activity were carried out in a semi-field in a gauge in which were put a prefixed number of uh, Philenus fumans and then we have evaluated the uh, mortality uh, of uh, the uh, individual that we have put in each uh, gauge. Uh, during uh, this uh, field uh, trial, we have uh, verified the effectiveness of chantraneliprole, this is a new uh, substance, and the phosmet uh, that uh, belong to, uh, to the estery phosphoric. And uh, both uh, these uh, products uh, show high uh, prompt effect in the control of uh, the adult of Philenus spumarius and a, 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 a persistence up to uh, 20 to 25 uh, days, uh, days um, showed so similar result as uh, uh, in previous uh, field three we, we have obtained using neonicotinoid and uh, pyrethroid. The, the most important is the result that we have obtained with uh, form smet that belong to the, uh, the ester phosphoric because in other field three all the uh, ester phosphoric that we have tested do not uh, show a good uh, result in the containment of the adult of uh, Philenus uh, spumarius. Actually, uh, no active substances are um, available in organic farmer for the control 
uh, of uh, uh, the adult of the Philenus fumarius. So, uh, in order to verify if uh, a repellent pro uh, product uh, such as kaolin can uh, show the, uh, uh, an effect in uh, reducing the possibility of the transmission of uh, the adult of Philenus fumarius, we have set up a field trial in, uh, in, in the affected zone uh, using uh, uh, helping a plant and uh, exposed the, the, um, the plants to naturally infected uh, adults of uh, Philenus uh, spumarius. Um, after the uh, uh, first symptom in the field of trial were observed in uh, anthrax uh, check, uh, uh, then uh, were observed uh, the increasing of uh, the symptom, uh, and the first symptom appearing on uh, the um, plant triad with the kaolin, while after the trial from the starting of uh, the triang, trial, uh, no symptoms were observed in uh, uh, the positive control triated with the imidacopyrid. But uh, the situation is uh, different regarding uh, the percentage of infected plant because at, uh, after the trial from the starting of the, uh, the trial, uh, more, more than 75 uh, uh, plants in all treat, uh, treatment are infected. Uh, so in uh, conclusion, uh, we can uh, say that in uh, an integrated pest management strategy based on control of uh, infants and uh, adults is needed to suppress population Primulensus uh, fumarius. So it is uh, performed at the right time of the development of the nymph remain the most effective strategy to suppress immature and prevent the emergency of the adult. Other alternative methods can be used are herbicide, insecticide, pyroguide, and matching. Uh, Distrupidium egg masses using saltage in late wind provided to be effective against neophilenus cambesti, but not against philenus uh, spumarius. So poache species to replace the ground vegetation was not very effective against both spit and bug. Several factor, factor can influence positively or negative these uh, results. Use of inert compound uh, as repellent against adult do not reduce the speed of the infection on in the long, long term period, and similar results were obtained obtain with chemical application, confirming that short uh, period inoculation resulted in uh, successful transmission events. So uh, the evidence for the support the need to focus on the control of uh, the juvenile population. The data in, uh, regarding uh, the trap indicated that the yellow traps in orchard with high and medium density population of adult of Philenus spumarius are ge generally more efficient than sweeping net. With the low population density, traps were less efficient, but still uh, provide useful information on the presence of the spit bug. Thus, the evil of stick traps can be combined with the sweeping net for a better evaluation of the population dynamics, could be used for monitoring the presence of the spit bugs and give indication for the application of the insecticide, evaluation the efficacy of uh, insecticides after uh, the application. Thank you for uh, your attention, and uh, thank you for uh, my colleague that uh, have uh, participated to the different uh, activity. Um, all right, we have time for one quick question. Thank you, Helga Reisenzang from Argus, Austria. Are there any uh, thresholds for Philinus or Neophilinus? <coughs> for the application of uh, thresholds. Thresholds. I'm asking about thresholds for Philenus and or uh, Neophilinus. Ah, this is the population of the adults or the smooth? Uh, for both. Uh, the, the both? Yeah, uh, are there any? Uh, uh, because we have evaluated the uh, low density no. population. Mm, we have considered the low density population when uh, the number of nymphs is lower than uh, five 
uh, individual per square meter, medium density population uh, with uh, ranging from 5 to 20 uh, juvenile per square meter, and high uh, density population where when is lower uh, than uh, 20 uh, individual per square uh, meters. And what do you re recommend for the farmers? When do they have to apply uh, pesticides? When they, uh, I, yeah. uh, at a low the or moment medium? to apply the pesticides, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, right moment to apply this, uh, the pesticides is uh, when uh, the uh, adults move, come from the ground vegetation uh, to the olive canopy. Uh, before that, uh, they acquire uh, the, uh, the bacteria and uh, so that they transmit the bacteria to new healthy plant. Because after this uh, very uh, late, uh, to control uh, in an area where the, uh, the bacterium <coughs> is uh, present, the control of the spread of the disease. But you recommend it every time, even if there is a low population. This is what I'm, I meant with threshold, because for um, an integrated production, you need a threshold. Uh, do you have a population size that you want to control, or just when they move? Uh, no, uh, the we have... Uh, no, uh, in, in this case we have uh, verified the density population be, uh, before and after the uh, application. Um, okay. Ah, the application, yes. Uh, in, in, yes. See. Okay. Um, See. Thank you. All thank right. You. We'll let you guys finish yeah, it during the you. coffee break. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you again, okay. Enzo. Um, Okay, um, our next speaker is Paula Batista uh, from Braganza, and she's going to tell us about a uh, comparison between microbiome of susceptible and resistant olive cultivars. Thank you. So, uh, good afternoon. So, I will present uh, the results of uh, collaboration established between several researchers uh, belonging to different uh, institutions, and this work was developed uh, within the SHIZEF actors that are uh, ongoing project. So the main aim of this work is to study uh, the olive microbiome of susceptible and resistant cultivars um, uh, to the olive uh, decline syndrome. So um, as already present by Donato, um, as you already know, uh, in the epidemic uh, area in the southern of Italy, in field observations uh, were found uh, some cultivars that are uh, highly susceptible to the olive quick decline syndrome, whereas other cultivars such as FS17 uh, uh, are uh, resistant. Um, the identification of uh, the traits related with this resistance is uh, very important because we can restore uh, the cultivation of uh, the olive uh, in uh, epidemic areas such as in the, um, in the southern of Italy. So, um, as you already know, in the recent years, um, there are uh, uh, an increase uh, of studies reporting the ability of uh, endophytes uh, to um, increase the resistance of the host plants, of their host plants, against diseases. So, uh, such uh, endophytes, they share the same ecological niche as the pathogens, uh, and they can uh, increase the, the resistance of uh, their host plants uh, by direct antagonism against the pathogen or indirectly uh, through the plants by uh, leading uh, to the uh, induced resistance. Um, despite this evidence, we still uh, know a little um, about the capacity of the endophytes colonizing specifically these uh, olive tree cultivars in the increase uh, uh, the, the, the resistance uh, against the, uh, this disease. Therefore, um, this work um, intends to specifically address these questions and uh, uh, by studying or by evaluating the dynamics of endophytes and Shilella communities in these two uh, cultivars, the susceptible one, sorry, whoops. So the susceptible, Kalamata, oh sorry, <laughs> again. The susceptible Kalamata and the resistant FES-17 uh, the evaluate the role of endophytic communities in the expression of the symptoms and also try to identify potential endophytes with antagonistic activity against the pathogen. 
Therefore, um, in, the, um, in the epidemic uh, area uh, of, in the southern of Italy, specifically in the uh, San Nicola, was um, selected one orchard, uh, and in that orchard we have collected twigs from the two cultivars, so the resistant ones and the susceptible ones, in two different periods, in April of 2017 and in November of 2018. Um, these twigs are used to extract DNA, and uh, then we um, estimated the abundance of Shilella by quantitative PCR, and based on these results, we have uh, identified for each cultivar uh, trees that are uh, idly colonized by Shilella and low colonized by Shilella. And based on these results, we have selected um, for each cultivar a total of 12 trees, and uh, six of them are idly infected, and the other six are low infected by Shilella. Uh, these trees, the DNA uh, extract from the twigs of these trees are further used to study, to analyze their microbiome by using two different approaches, DNA shotgun sequencing and also Illumina, in order to study uh, bacteria and fungi. So, uh, the overall results obtained uh, show that uh, the, the microbiome community is uh, composed by uh, fungi and bacteria in a similar abundance, and uh, uh, within the bacteria, um, we saw that the, that community comprised elements uh, belong to 35 genera and 7 phyla, and uh, the most dominant elements belonging to the proteobacteriophilia and to the Shilella genus as expected because the, these trees, are, uh, uh, these trees uh, survey are in the epidemic area. In what concerns fungal community, um, we saw that that community uh, comprised elements belonging to uh, uh, 42 genera and four phyla, uh, and the most dominant elements uh, belong to the Ascomicotophila, and uh, within the genera was identified the most abundant was Willemia, that it's um, a genus that um, uh, has uh, um, sherophilic properties. It's one of the genera that uh, is composed mostly for elements that are the property to be sherophilic. So th that was identified to date. Um, then, uh, for each cultivar and for each of the here survey, we uh, try to identify uh, the core microbiome and uh, why uh, we decide to, to study the core microbiome. So the core microbiome comprises. Um, genera that are present in most of, uh, in 50% of the, uh, the, the, um, the plants, uh, the, of the plants survey, and that uh, show uh, uh, abundance, a relative abundance higher than 0.01%. And uh, we decide with specific, to specifically study this community because in contrast uh, to, the, um, to the inhabitants of, uh, to the microorganisms that can fluctuate uh, depending on the environmental conditions, the persistence of these endophytes uh, means or suggests that they, they could have a greater uh, effect uh, on, the, on the plant fitness. So, uh, after the identification of this core um, microbiome community, either for the bacterial and for the fungi, we uh, see that for uh, the, the core bacteria, uh, there are, in the first year of sampling, we see that there are differences between both uh, cultivars. So the resistant, it's mostly the, 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 the genera that is more per, per persistent, it's methylbacterium. So it's uh, a genus that uh, uh, is described as having the capacity uh, to antagonize Chilella fastidiosa, as was nicely presented by our colleague Franco Negro in a poster that I invite you to see you. So it's very well to know these uh, genus for that. Uh, while in the susceptible Kalamata, uh, the genus that was most uh, uh, pr prevalent, most uh, present, was Azaya, that it's a genus that um, uh, is also described as an uh, endosymbiont. However, in the second year uh, of the survey, we see that uh, Shilella in both cultivars become the most prevalent, and in particular in the Kalamata, uh, this gender was unique. Uh, as uh, in the core microbiology. Um, in what concerns 
um, are the, the abundance. So we see that um, the increase, there are an increase in abundance of Shilela, and uh, to get a, be a better uh, picture of the progress of the bacteria, of the bacteria in this uh, uh, community, we decided to uh, estimate the ratio between uh, the Shilela abundance over the total bacteria. And we see that in both cultivars, in the first year of the survey, the, the ratio between Chilella and the total bacteria of, in terms of abundance, it's almost the same. However, in the second year of the survey, this ratio increased uh, greatly, in particular in the susceptible cultivar Kalamata, where we see that there are a significant increase in this ratio. So uh, it seems that Chilella tends to colonize uh, totally uh, the, the internal tissues, and uh, this progression of the Shilella was particularly noticed in the uh, susceptible cultivar. In what concerns uh, the core fungal community, so we see that for both uh, cultivars, the resistance and the susceptible, as well as for the two years, that the core fungal community didn't change uh, due to the increase of the uh, Shilella. And the most prevalent genera uh, for both cultivars and for uh, the both years was uh, the genus Wallemia. So, uh, based on these results, it seems that the fungal community, in particular the core fungal community, is less affected, has less impact uh, due to the increase of the Shilella as compared to the bacteria, to the core bacteria. However, uh, we try uh, also to see um, if the progress of the increase of this chilella could have an impact in the relative abundance of fungi. And uh, as you can see here, um, in uh, the first year of the sampling for both cultivars, uh, the ratio between uh, the abundance of fungi in relation uh, relatively to the total bacteria is uh, higher or almost the same in this, in this case for the Kalamata. However, in the second year of the sampling, we see that this ratio decreased uh, greatly and uh, because of the increase of Shilella. Okay? So it means that uh, um, uh, the Shilella uh, don't have an impact in the composition of the core fungal community, but in terms of abundance, they change, they have the capacity to change this kind of uh, ratio. Um, after these results, we, uh, the, the next question is to see uh, if um, um, the presence of this increase of bacteria could also, of Shilella, could also have an impact in the overall uh, uh, bacteria and uh, uh, fungal community. For that, we have uh, to see the results of this or the impact of this increase of the, uh, the bacteria, of the Shilella bacteria. Uh, either in the diversity as well as in the composition of the overall bacteria and fungal community. Uh, in terms of uh, the diversity, uh, we see that the increase in Chilel abundance uh, decrease uh, the diversity of bacteria. However, in the case of the fungi, the increase of Chilella increase the diversity of fungi. Uh, if we want also to compare the diversity between both cultivars, uh, we can see that uh, in terms of bacterial community, um, uh, the cultivar that is uh, resistant to the Shilella has a higher diversity, higher bacterial diversity comparatively to the susceptible. In what concerns the fungal community, uh, we didn't uh, find it a significant differences in terms of fungal diversity between both cultivars. Um, in terms of uh, composition, uh, we saw that uh, um, we found uh, significant shifts in bacterial composition um, uh, and in terms of the fungal community, we didn't find significant differences in terms of composition between trees that are highly colonized by Shilella and, uh, or lower colonized by Shilella. Okay? Here we can see a cluster uh, of the trees with high abundance of Shilella and the, uh, the, the low, uh, low abundance of Shilella. Uh, this um, 
differences between them um, in, in terms of bacterial composition can be seen here in this picture. So we can see that there are some genres that are present uh, in trees that uh, have low abundance of Shilella. And then uh, here we have, for example, a low abundance of some genres that then increase their abundance when the, the trees are uh, infected with uh, a higher population of Shilella. In other case, some genres disappear completely and then there are other cases that are reduced. So we can see here clear that there are some difference between high and low trees uh, uh, colonized by Shilella. In terms of fungi, these differences are not so um, noticed. We can see uh, so it's not so evident. Uh, we have already some genres here that appear in trees that have low abundance of Shilel, and when the, this population of Shilel increased, this genera uh, disappear. Um, we have also identified a set uh, of uh, uh, endophytic bacteria that are positively correlated uh, with the presence or high populations of Shilella or with low population of Shilella. For example, in that case, we can see that there are in particular uh, three, genera, three genus of bacteria that are uh, uh, positively correlated with higher populations of Shilella. In contrast, these genera are uh, positively correlated uh, um, with low abundance of Shilella in the olive trees. Uh, this kind of uh, relations was also found between cultivars. For example, in the cultivar Kalamata, one of the genera was positively uh, uh, correlated with this cultivar, uh, and with the FES 17, the resistant cultivar was positively correlated with this genera. So it means that uh, there are each, um, th that this uh, genera specifically colonize a, a niche where we can find high abundance of Shilella or a low abundance of Shilella and also to a particular cultivar. The same pattern was identified for the fungal community where we can find a, a set of uh, fungal genera that are also positively correlate with the, the presence, with the, when the, the, the population of uh, Shilella increase, or uh, other group of, uh, of fungal that are also correlated when the population of Shilella is low. Some of these genera are, um, are already described as having, for example, a positive effect in terms of biocontrol, such as uh, uh, Bulgaria. Uh, others, like Altonaria and Colepotricum, are uh, recognized uh, fungal genres as uh, pathogens, okay? The same was happened with, um, with uh, other genres that are positively correlated, associated to either uh, the susceptible cultivar or either to the uh, resistant cultivar. Um, after that, um, we have isolated um, some uh, endophytes from both cultivars, the susceptible and the resistant cultivar, and their uh, antagonistic effect was tested against the Shilella. However, the results uh, are not so good as we expected, and none of these late status uh, show uh, antagonistic effect against uh, Shilella fastidiosa. So, as main conclusions, uh, Shilella, uh, we saw that Shilella dominates the bacterial endophyte community of both cultivars, uh, and becomes the unique genus uh, of the core bacteria of the susceptible Kalamata in the second year of study. The increase of this Shilella abundance, uh, we saw that it changed the diversity and composition in particular of the bacterial community and in the susceptible Kalamata. This change, uh, me, uh, we think that this change could be due to the presence of Shilella that probably can encourage the establishment of other bacteria species, and this kind of eff effect was not so evident in the case of the uh, fungal community. We have also found uh, specific bacteria and fungal genera that are uh, associated uh, to the higher population of Shilella or low population of Shilella, as well as 
positively correlated to a cultivar and um, their capacity uh, to tiger the disease should be studied in the future. Uh, to finish, I only want to thank the persons that work that was involved directly in this work. And thank you. One question? Um, we have time for one quick question. Uh, d uh, do you have any idea of uh, how much uh, the environment influenced the composition of the uh, microbiome? Uh, I mean, if you evaluate the same cultivar in different locations, do you have a...? Yes, the, the environment has great influence uh, in the endophytic community composition. Okay, so um, we have already some studies indicating that, for example, the season has great influence um, the type of management is also, it will influence greatly also. And uh, in this particular case, I think that um, the, fa the fact of the trees are in the epidemic area, make that this increase in Chilella, in population of Chilella over the years, uh, 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 will be the, the main responsible for this increase because the trees are always, uh, are constantly subject to re-infections, uh, okay? So, and this is probably the cause of this great increase uh, of abundance of Shilela over the years. All right, thank you, Paula. And <laughs> our last speaker of the session is Massimiliano Morelli. He's gonna be talking about work on uh, paraburcoldaria to control um, the olive disease in Italy. Hi everybody and thanks for giving me the chance to talk about our ongoing efforts to um, test the bio, a biocontrol agent to take uh, Xylella fastidiosa disease in olive. As we may read from literature, uh, in the course of the years, uh, several uh, approaches have been tested uh, to propose uh, uh, control strategies for Xylella fastidiosa. And if these approaches can be roughly subdivided into different uh, groups, one uh, uh, gatoring uh, preventive approaches and the other one gatoring um, therapeutic approaches, you see that in both cases uh, the presence of uh, um, the attempt to test a microbial antagonist has, has, uh, has, has been proposed, helpful uh, with controversial results. At least up to uh, the very recent times and uh, when we got the nice novelty, from Professor Lindo, as you learned yesterday from his own words, that a rhizobacterium seems to be um, very effective to counteract uh, Peer's disease in grapevine. Uh, Paraburcolderia phytofirmans strain PSGN is not a novelty for literature, as in the recent years uh, has been uh, widely studied for uh, his action as plant growth promoting rhizobacterium. And uh, in, uh, most recently, uh, because it seems to have an action as a biocontrol agent against several fungal and bacterial diseases, of course, including Xylella fastidiosa. On these premises, we wanted to test uh, the possibility to transfer the experience uh, in grapevine to our pathosystem, which is uh, the one um, composed by Xylella fastidiosa, the donor strain, and olive. At the beginning, the relationship between uh, PSJN and olive was a kind of blind date, so we had to start uh, testing the possibility that this bacterium was able to colonize xylem vessels, not only in olive, but also in uh, other uh, experimental hosts that we are currently using in our pathogenicity tests related to xylella fastidiosa, like oleander, periwinkle, or tobacco. At the beginning, we didn't know anything about the, uh, this possibility, so we had to test also the best way to deliver PSJN cells into the xylem vessels of uh, our uh, plant host. And we started uh, testing a large panel of uh, different ways to um, try this section. And uh, starting from uh, needle inoculation that was the most commonly used method in our lab for pathogenicity tests related to Zalala fastidiosa. 
we, hold, uh, we had also to have uh, in our hands uh, tools for detection of PSJ young cells in Hollywood. And uh, we started uh, developing a um, cool PCR uh, cyber green based method that uh, was uh, um, that uh, made these premises on uh, previous experience in different hosts. And that allowed us to rely on uh, an effective method which proved to be sensitive over a wide range uh, between uh, 10 to the 7, 10 to the uh, second uh, CFU per milliliters. With these tools in our hand, we, we proved that, uh, at least in our, in our experience, uh, the best way to uh, deliver cell, uh, PSJN cells into olive was uh, the needle inoculation, uh, whereas the other method seems, doesn't, seems to not work. And um, I should add that uh, in, um, we are now uh, other experimental fields trying to test uh, different methods uh, like endotherapy or airbrush spraying. Uh, but uh, these results are still waiting for uh, validation in the next uh, weeks. So we finally proved that um, PSJN was able to colonize not only Olive but also Oleander and with a high success rate also Periwinkle, whereas in the case of tobacco, or at least in the case of uh, the cultivar that we use, Petit Havana SR1, uh, con uh, results are still controversial and uh, requires far further validation. We also confirmed uh, molecular detection with a um, routinely established protocol for uh, um, isolation on culture media, and uh, we were able uh, to prove, at least uh, up to now, that uh, uh, viable cells of PSJN are persist persisting in uh, olive uh, up to uh, 500 days post inoculation. We also had uh, mm, some proof from electron microscopy identification, and uh, you see here uh, bacterial cells of PSJN uh, inocula artificially inoculated and then ray isolated from olive. So um, once we achieved this uh, first um, and preliminary and crucial steps, we could start with our experiments. We choose an experimental station located in a very heavily affected area um, in Salento, and uh, we define uh, two different um, theses. In the first case, we wanted to test a preventive approach, so we inoculated PSGN into young uh, olive plants that were then exposed to natural infection uh, in that area. And in the second case, we uh, tested also a curative approach while uh, um, inoculated PSGN in uh, plants that. Uh, where uh, that had been already um, exposed uh, since 2015 uh, to the, in the same area. As for results, I should mention that in the case of a preventive uh, thesis, uh, after only one year of exposure to the vector, we only could prove that uh, PSJN was efficiently uh, delivered to the plants. But when we tested the Zalella fastidiosa infection, it, it was um, uh, yet under the threshold uh, for detection. So we should wait for another exposure, uh, season of exposure and uh, for a further um, measurement that will be done soon after uh, the end of this conference. Whereas uh, we have uh, some preliminary results from uh, curative treatment as uh, that allows us to have some uh, um, some first evidences on uh, PSJN colonization patterns. It seems that the PSJN moves slowly, slowly from uh, the point of inoculation, but at the same time that uh, its concentration seems to remain stable or slightly decrease over time and still, and still remain uh, over a range of uh, about uh, 10 to the um, uh, fifth CFU per milliliter. Uh, what about the effects on uh, Zylella fastidiosa concentration and olive quick decline uh, symptoms? We observed that in uh, curative field treatments that um, uh, it seems that uh, XF concentration seems to show uh, slight de uh, decreases in uh, um, uh, PSJN treated plants, although this um, data are still not uh, statistically significant. In parallel experiment uh, done by artificial inoculation and under controlled condition, the same trend seems to be confirmed. When uh, we tried to correlate concentration of the two bacteria, bacteria we could not prove uh, so far any uh, significant correlation uh, according to Pearson test. And uh, when uh, we 
try to observe uh, by visual inspection the disease progression and measured by uh, an empirical scale based on uh, severity McKinney, McKinney severity index. It seems that um, UPEN only a single application and only uh, one season of observation. We, uh, the PSGN seems to not uh, have an effect on uh, disease progress. But uh, of course, this data requires further validation over time. We don't want to stop our observation limitedly to the direct effect of the interaction because uh, we are uh, sensitive to the prolific inputs coming from recent literature on PSJN that seems to propose a mechanism of effect in the case of biocontrol um, um, action that, uh, that is the same that was yesterday mentioned by Professor Lindo, and that seems to um, tell us that PSJN could somehow prime uh, a plant defense response in the presence of the pathogen, and this can result in a cascade effects that affects the pathogen and then the uh, bacterium itself. To test this hypothesis also in Hollywood, we are now um, uh, setting an experiment where we will uh, test in different combination in presence absence of uh, xylella if uh, uh, it is possible to measure some effect on gene expression in uh, uh, pathways uh, that are uh, relevant for plant defense response. And this will be done uh, at different time points to have a complete um, panel of uh, this observation. In the same uh, optic, we also want to see uh, with a metagenomic study that we are starting if uh, it's possible to measure an effect, a combined effect between PSJN and Xylella fastidiosa on the, the residential microbial community to answer some questions such as if PSJN is itself perturbating the biodiversity indices or if on the other side PSJN can somehow mitigate this uh, perturbation effect that was uh, showed and uh, that was uh, evidenced by uh, Zalella fastidiosa as you learned uh, a few minutes ago by uh, the relation uh, from Paula. Um, so as you can see, we have uh, several attempts ongoing, several data that needs to be further validated. And uh, my feeling is that uh, we w if we want to propose an effective biocontrol strategy, we have to understand if uh, the biocontrol agent works and how it works, because this is the only way to propose to the final users and provide them for an effective method that can be also um, based on feasible protocols to be applied in a, a real context. With these words, I want to, sorry, I want to finish acknowledging the huge crew which is uh, behind my words and that belongs to three different institutions and the funding agency and uh, you for your time and your attention. Thank you. Um, thank you for finishing early. Um, so uh, do we have any questions for Massimiliano? Steve? Mm -hmm. It's very curious that the uh, strain is not moving very much in olive. Yeah. To, what is the relative rate of uh, Xylella itself in olive compared to other plants? I'm just wondering, is olive something that's hard to move through? Uh, yes, it seems that uh, uh, the rate uh, is uh, slow also for Xylella and uh, that um, I want also to add that uh, maybe um, we had first observation that uh, PSJN seems to have uh, uh, even more difficult way um, along the xylem vessels because we observed uh, some cells that were somehow escaping the straight way. So this maybe can, uh, some, um, can create and can make this movement even slower, more slowly. Yeah. So have you tried um inoculation at single points with the pathogen as well as the paraburcalderia. In your field study, it seemed like you were relying on multiple inoculations by insect yeah, yeah, vectors course, and yes. things. Uh, I'm just wondering to what extent, if paraburcalderia doesn't move very much, in, um, whether 
in the very first preliminary observation in greenhouse condition when uh, we put together the two uh, bacteria uh, as a mixture, it seems that uh, Xylella is even slower than, uh, is uh, faster than uh, PSJM, yeah. All right, any other question? Okay, um, so we have a few minutes. We'd like to invite all the speakers for our discussion question session. And uh, as a way to start the discussion, uh, I, I was wondering um, for all of you, um, when you're trying these different treatments to control um, disease development or bacterial colonization or transmission or anything, you're doing all of this under an immense amount of uh, vector pressure out in the field um, that you keep getting reinfections all the time, probably thousands of them every year. And uh, if you ever thought of actually trying these different approaches, uh, in a condition where you're actually suppressing vector population uh, after the treatment. Okay, okay, it might, it might be me, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> So I guess what, what I'm saying is you're, you're doing these, all these different treatments, right? And, uh, uh, well, five of you. And uh, the question is uh, why you are testing these different treatments. At the same time, you have probably thousands of, thousands of infection events per plant per year uh, after your treatment. Uh, it seems to me that if you're going to get, uh, unless you have a very, very strong response, you're not going to see anything that looks like it's being successful. So why not do essentially exactly the same work under conditions where you are suppressing vector populations, so instead of having thousands of infection events all the time, you have maybe hundreds. I, I was asked at lunch to ask a, a difficult question. Uh, yes, I, I believe you are right. And um, I think that uh, that's, the, um, that's why I was talking about uh, uh, different approaches, uh, because uh, we have to set um, very well if, uh, in my case, in uh, the case of uh, biocontrol agent, this can be a preventive or curative approach. But also, if this can be um, proposed in a very uh, heavily affected area or uh, in areas where, uh, in different situations, um, the use maybe of multiple uh, application of the biocontrol agent can somehow at least reduce the inoculum load in the plants. But of course, that's why uh, probably. Um, at the end of my study, we will not be able uh, to uh, measure great effect on disease progress in, uh, in that uh, area, in, the, in this heavily affected area, but maybe we can uh, start um, describing some uh, um, effects um, starting from uh, controlled condition and understand how it works. And then on this data, we can then uh, proceed with uh, um, a protocol for uh, multiple application or uh, well defined where uh, w with which is the best timing for application and uh, if i can uh, make an additional comment first of all i think that the the goal or the wish or the dream is to find some some tool able to to protect uh, uh, both preventive as as curative the problem uh, as a and for this I think that the best test is to work with the, the worst scenario. And the worst scenario is the, the, the area with the, the heavy pressure of inoculum. But beside this, uh, as at, at least uh, officially, the, uh, the, the Italian legislation now uh, made also uh, mandatory, also in that area, 
some action of, of vector control. So, so it is supposed that at least for, uh, uh, I don't know, treatment, agronomical practices for uh, to, to contain the vector population uh, on the juvenile uh, is, uh, is done in that area. But uh, this is uh, more or less the situation. Yeah, I, I'd like to, to complement because when we started this uh, uh, project a few years ago, nobody was using the control, the vector control yet. But now the scenario changed as uh, Enza showed you have some options to try to control the vector. And I think that based on the Enza results, we could like uh, design other experiments using the, the control to, to control the vector and then using uh, N-acetylcysteine that I, we observe we have good results or, or at least promising results, but also uh, testing in, in a field with uh, that has a more to to tolerant cultivar. It, it's one scenario that we can, I mean, uh, start to uh, use uh, tools you already have had in your hands, I mean, to control the vector, uh, some tolerant cultivars, and probably using acetylcysteine together to see if you can have less disease or increase production. Then I think that's another point you could discuss to, to analyze the production. And the other scenario that I, scenario that I can visualize is uh, innovative strategy, like using uh, microbiome, things more um, sustainable, to in in uh, in the future can integrated things, I mean probably decrease the control of the vector or in different time you use one point and then the other point because I don't know how many spray you use or in each time of the year, all of the things is important to put together to understand and then uh, design a um, management to try to, to, to decrease the, the symptoms of the disease. That's, that's my point. All right, cool, we got started. All right. Um. Yeah, just a comment on biological control using uh, bacteria or fungi or yeast. Um, did you check it, uh, different ratios between the biocontrol agent and Shilela? Because it's very well known in the biological control area, and probably uh, Professor Lindo <laughs> knows very well also, that the efficacy of the control depends on the relative amount, on the ratio. To be honest, uh, I, um, we started trying um, to um, inoculate a um, quantity of PSJN coming from the literature, about uh, 10 to the 8 uh, CFU per milliliter. And uh, when uh, we now are uh, working on uh, the um, combined uh, uh, application, we were using a mixture one to one. But of course, I uh, do believe that uh, um, I can, uh, we can follow, we have to follow your suggestion because I was also thinking that we can uh, play with these numbers um, because we can start this from uh, the greenhouse experiments and see what happens there. Also, because we have detection meter, the isolation, uh, we, can, we can count the situation because it's, it's, it's quite controllable when uh, compared to the situation in field, uh, in open field, of course, yeah. And uh, because, uh, if uh, mainly if we want to uh, see if uh, a plant defense is uh, triggered, we need to know also the, the quantity that uh, is able to have this biological action. You want to add? Anybody else? Everybody wants coffee? Oh, okay. So, if in relation to microbiome and the, the biological control, uh, have you tried to use this uh, strategy in the nursery? I mean, in the uh, younger plant. I mean, like uh, immunization, 
before go to the field because I mean the idea is the plant is more well prepared to deal with this allele or other pathogen besides using the the trees or the plant already with the symptoms so uh, we have um, an experience ongoing uh, where we inoculated uh, olive trees with the microbiota extract from the resistant cultivar and um, what we expected so it's an uh, ongoing uh, experience we don't have uh, already results uh, what we expect is that it's, it's uh, used not only um, a single species or a single strain, but uh, a consortium of microorganisms because we saw uh, in our results that we found positively associated to a, a specific niche, a consortium of microorganisms and not only one species. So we imagine there are um, a network or something uh, between uh, the different microorganisms and uh, we believe that uh, uh, the benefits come from the biological control comes more from this consortium so what we have what we did was inoculated this consortium and now we hope to have results soon okay. uh, Steve The community, the community analysis of the uh, infected trees to be quite interesting. These things are sometimes kind of hard to interpret, though. I was wondering, you, you found a large number of organisms that were negatively associated with the abundance of the pathogen, and you saw reductions in uh, diversity with higher pathogen and also lower proportions of these other things. And I think the word is, operative word is proportion because you're looking at the relative abundance of these different organisms. And what goes up, the others have to go down. Have you done much quantitation? I think the real issue is a quantification in both of these studies in terms of how many organisms were there. Your results almost implies that there is a increase in the numbers of bacteria of different types in these trees. I frankly was surprised you could see many other organisms in a tree that's full of xylella proportionally, but I think it would be particularly important to know whether these things that are negatively associated with xylella, in fact, had actually increased or changed in any amount in a tree together with xylella, or did their numbers look smaller because everything else went up? Does that make sense? Well, uh, I think, yes, it makes sense. So it's uh, a very complex system. Uh, so we have uh, a, a great diversity. We don't know really what happened. And besides the microbial community, we have also the interaction with the, ox plant, with the host plant it, that has also some influence in, in this microbial community, as well as the environmental. So um, it's uh, very, very complex to find uh, um, a link or uh, between uh, uh, if one species increase and other decrease, wh what is the, the reasons for that? Um, I think that we must uh, to, to try to, to see what happened there. We must start to do uh, experience in control conditions uh, and then to try to, to see what happened. Uh, with these kind of networks, because it's basically networks that are, that they live in a community. Some of the microorganisms can antagonize others, others can help, um, and it's a, a very complex uh, system. All right, one more question or coffee? Can I, can I ask a question? One more question. Can I, can I ask a question? You, you can ask a question, yeah, and there is a question here. Just no coffee for you. I don't know a lot of, but uh, is it possible that uh, the microbiome has an effect on the length uh, of the um, asymptomatic period uh, in uh, uh, auxilia fastidiosa because of competition? And, uh, is it something that you have already uh, uh, analyzed? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, so uh, in, the, in the experience that are ongoing uh, related with the plant inoculation, we do that. So we, we inoculated olive trees simultaneously with chilella. Uh, and then we evaluate the progress so uh, to see if uh, uh, they can establish or is, th is that is your question correctly so if uh, the microbiota could establish in the in the olive tree is that yeah 
Yes, I think it's linked, yeah. It All right. could affect. Last question here, up front. Ah, it's okay. Um, I'm Mauro from Argentina. I work on INTA. Uh, I wanted to know in the field experiments, uh, when you measure the progression of the disease, don't you have a high variability in the, in the trees? And how do you go with this to compare the different treatments or the progression of the disease in the different plants in the same variety is the same or more, more or less similar. The for me or uh, for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the progression of the disease depends what your, what your parameter. I mean, in, in my case, I, I was looking for the fruit increase it because the symptoms I was looking for in relation to the CVC is because the fruit became very small. And then it was one parameter I can follow and I give a score and follow this progression of the disease or the symptoms you want to analyze. In the case of the olive, they, ha they use it I scale from zero to five, that five is so, and then during that time, you need to analyze during that time. It's not only two evaluation, for instance. During different years or different months, and you put all this together, and you can calculate the progression, if they increase it or decrease it. And there, are, there is a specific formula that every, uh, it's a lot of people use, uh, that's area under the disease progress curve is one of them then you can analyze if this progression is increasing or decreasing during this time. But it's important you have a lot of evaluations to put all together, understand what's going on during the time of the treatment. In what I saw in the field in Argentina is that plant, different plants with the same variety, uh, some plants didn't change in the time, and others plants in one year were dead, uh, looking the the canopy. Uh, that's why when you try to compare different treatments, uh, looking this big difference, I think it's complicated. Yes, but I think it's, uh, it, it, it may happen also, but that's why the, 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 the trials are made uh, using not only one or a few plants, but an, a significant, uh, significant number of plants in order to have a... To have a <laughs> To have, also, to have also a buffer for the effect of the variability, but... Uh. And uh, in the case of uh, biological treatment, you start from uh, an experimental field where you, at the beginning, you set plants that are more or less in the same uh, severity state, that which is uh, hopefully a low severity uh, state to see the progress of the disease. So you start, to, you try to be homogeneous and you define uh, uh, different uh, thesis like this. All right, uh, I see that Claude Bragar is upset with me because he wants some coffee, so let's thank our speakers and uh, get out of this room. Thank you.